on previous exams. Mm -hmm. and, so, and, and so it's just on the stuff we covered last week and today for the new content. And I went back and checked, and there's 30 questions on the new content, 70 questions on the old test. <laughs> and I think there's actually 29 new questions, because I was trying to count them. But approximately 30. Yeah. From the last test. This is, is my old study guide. So disregard that that old content that we've already been tested on is on there. These things are the new content or the new questions. Everyone got it? Okay. Any questions about the final before we move on? We're all good? 70 questions from previous tests on old content. 30 questions, or maybe 29, on new content that was covered yes, or last week and today. So those of you that are struggling a little bit with your grade, 70 questions will you know the questions. So you should you should do fine, right? But that way it will give everyone time. Um, the university tells us that we can use class time to try to increase compliance with completion of the course evaluation. So um, I can step up. So biceps rupture. Uh, there are different ways. Yeah. If you can move that box. Oh, so sure. Can... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's probably right in your way. And oh, another thing is for those of you who I haven't checked their pin strength and you would like to participate in my study before after before you leave, we'll have like some time after class that we could check pin strength with people. And even the Kalamazoo students, if you wanted to stay, because we're also having a cultural presentation from 12 to 1. I don't know if it's in this room or the room next door, but if you didn't have an opportunity to catch it in Kalamazoo for the Kalamazoo folks, you should really stay and catch it today, that's a rhyme, in um, Grand Rapids because it's from 12 to 1. So you could stay and get your pin strength tested and then you could stay for the cultural talk. So. And the Botanical Gardens, which is right after oh, that. Oh, and, and the Grand Rapids students are going to Meyer Gardens yeah. and it's going to be 71 today. So it's a nice day to be outside, right? And the butterflies are there, right? Um, okay. All right, so back on to biceps rupture. This is something that you will probably like to see. It's pretty, it's actually pretty common. I've seen a lot of people with biceps ruptures. Um, so you can either rupture your biceps, remember, because you have an origin and insertion, right? It could be either a proximal biceps rupture or you can have a distal biceps rupture. When we think of prox proximal, we're typically thinking that our problems from degeneration, older patients, postural problems with people reaching forward and, and deteriorating their biceps. Um, this, because we have two heads of the biceps, right, it usually only one gets ruptured. So the patient can still um, flex their elbow because the other head of the biceps is working. But when someone ruptures their biceps, if they rupture one part, it won't be as strong, right? You won't have as good of strength for really physically demanding tasks. And it will look like a Popeye muscle because the, the proximal attachment let go and the muscle drops down. So it looks like that, like a sunken Popeye muscle, right? But you'll see it more pronounced because 
the proximal attachment let go and drop down so you'll see it kind of sagging a little bit more distal than if you had a really strong biceps where it would be more up here. So that's what it looks like. So with the proximal um, biceps rupture, a lot of times people don't get this repaired. It's usually with older patients. You still have your other head of your biceps to do function. And um, sometimes when the people are at that point in life, they have a lower demand, right? So they frequently don't repair um, the proximal biceps or they leave it up to the patient and make their own choice and decision. And I know you've heard me talk about the patient that I had um, that fell asleep while well, she had a problem with medication overdose and she fell asleep in the waterbed. Remember I talked about her when we talked about ulnar nerve dysfunction? And she had an amputation on one, an amputation on one side and an ulnar nerve uh, compression on the other side. And I had treated her for a while. She didn't, remember she didn't want a prosthesis because she had in her mind she was going to get like an island type thing and, and she, had, um, she had lost her job because she had a long time off of work. She ended up while she had Medicaid then which meant that she would get a hook um, prosthesis, and she didn't want that. It was just, she just had a lot of trouble. And then probably about a year after I stopped seeing her, she calls me, and she's like, I just felt something pop in my arm. I'm really scared. Can I come in? I'm like, come in right now, come in. And she came into the clinic, and she ruptured the head of her biceps on her sound arm. Did I ever tell you this story? And then, and then, yeah, it was like a Popeye. So she had the Popeye muscle. So I was really worried about her because, okay, she has an amputation on the one side. She already has ulnar nerve pathology, which didn't fully come back because we know there's so many intrinsic muscles, and by the time the nerve heals, the muscles aren't viable to be re -innervated. So I was really worried, and that weekend I was speaking at a conference with some really good doctors that I knew, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna wait until this weekend. And, and so I advised her to see her, her hand surgeon and see what they did, but I wanted to find, I was gonna like survey all these doctors and what would you do, what would you do? Because even though you wouldn't likely fix it, but she only has one arm and is already compromised and she doesn't have a big demand on her life, but I just really wanted to have her have the very best treatment. And so everyone agreed, like it was like a panel, we were all having dinner. I'm like, what would you do, what would you do, what would you do? They all agreed they would not repair the biceps. Because why have the potential for something to go wrong and muck up her only sound arm? And her demand really was not um, huge physically for her life. And so they all recommended the same, don't repair it, don't repair the biceps. She still had the other head, so she had functional strength, you know, um, but so typically, frequently not repaired. So if you have someone like, what, you're not gonna repair it, but frequently not repaired. Distal biceps is a different situation, okay? Um, and this usually happens with middle-aged men that are doing heavy work. Like, and, and sometimes your natural reaction is to stop something even though there's no physical way that you could stop something like I had a patient recently that had a load of things falling off a truck and he reached down to grab it like he's gonna stop the load like even from my own experience my husband didn't hit the lock and the brake all the way and the tractor started going down towards my barn and I was like and then I had like a moment of reality, like you are not stopping this tractor, and I got out of the way. <laughs> but you, your natural reaction is to stop something. And so that is frequently how this happens. Or otherwise, maybe um, bodybuilders that are just doing a ton of weightlifting, and then they do something little like pick up a cup of coffee, and pop goes their biceps. Like it's degenerating, 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 and then pop goes the biceps. Overpowering that perfection and the really right now, but the muscle head to, to, to stop them from doing that. Right. And I think um, when it's reflexive too, you're overpowering that right. mechanism. Right. But um, if, so if they didn't repair it, I mean, 
Yeah, I mean, it, her bicep wasn't super strong, so she's not gonna. She didn't have as she didn't have as noticeable as a this. Okay. You know, because she wasn't. Uh, she was little, like Shabani little. She was little like that. So she didn't have like a big muscle. Sorry, Shabani, but she didn't have a big muscle. You know, to drop. <laughs> she was just small, small stature. Um, so this is a much smaller number of biceps ruptures, but these are the people that we typically see because they have surgery. Because they only have, there's only one um, attachment, so it has to be treated with surgery. And you can palpate your bicep if you if you um, put your just put your finger in your elbow crease. And, and flex um, and keep your um, forearm at neutral and then flex your elbow to 90 and supinate and you can feel your finger will hook into the biceps. Can you feel it? So you can check if someone's bicep is intact or not because if, if it's not, well they should be able to, right? But that's where you would palpate it. So will they still be able to supinate because that one bicep had the proximal? Right, because we have other muscles that supinate, right? So they'll still be able to supinate, but they won't be able to flex more likely. But they could have a partial tear, too. Partial tear. Um, I haven't seen people pre-op. Um, I've only seen people post-op. So I haven't had to really evaluate someone that wasn't sure. Unless my, my other lady, but she was in Fox. So my uncle had it. He said after it popped, he didn't feel anything. He was okay. Yeah. He had a distal. Um, oh yeah, because that rotation came up. Yeah. Distal was like weird. And even my patient um, with the, the waterbed patient, she didn't like. She just felt the pop. She didn't complain of pain with it either. So if you have a surgical repair, you'll have an incision site right at your elbow crease. And the typical thing that they use is an endo button to secure the distal aspect of the biceps down. So you might see, you know, I don't know. Sometimes you get a script and the doctors don't really write everything on there. Like, a lot of times you'll see a script in the doctors. So you might get a script that says endo button repair, right? So I, I like for you to know what they, things might be called so you'll know what they're talking about. They're talking about this patient had a biceps rupture, a distal biceps rupture, and they had a surgical repair with the endo button. And that's what's commonly used is endo button. And when we think of, um, um, of protocols, we're going to have to keep the tendon on a slack for a period of time, just like a tendon lacer a tendon laceration, right? So they might be in a hinged brace where their motion might not be allowed to go all the way straight, right? Or flex all the way up. Or they might be in a hinged brace that's locked and they don't allow any movement. It depends on the position. Um, and during that time, if they're not doing movement, we may not see them at all. And then, at three weeks out, they might get referred to therapy, where we start getting them moving. And it's very likely that they increase um, ten, you know, ten degrees of motion each time, each week. Kind of like the short art protocol of a dorsal dislocation or molar dislocation, where you then increase. So ten degrees a week, and then. Typically, but it's a long time before people can do really heavy work. And usually the people that do this injury are doing heavy work, like construction work, plumbers, like people doing heavy work. So it, it's a pretty long time before, um, before they can get back to heavy work. And so be mindful of that, that during this time, their scapular stabilization muscles are getting weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker because they're not really working, right? So you have to strengthen while they're protected and then for sure, um, my friend had a biceps rupture and he's uh, really um, muscly 
and uh, he has a farm and he's a plumber, so he, his whole day he is doing physical manual labor. And so he had the bicep structure and he was doing pretty well, and I'm like, let me just check and see how strong your scapular muscles are. And he's, I could have go, gone, you know, week, 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 because he had all this time and he was sent back to work full duty, but you have to really um, strengthen them proximally. So do you do like patient education with lifting after so they protect, uh, so it doesn't happen again? It, in the patient, they would, shouldn't be any more likely after their healed, healed. <laughs> There's a swim up on that. What do they do? They learn about NICU. You don't, <laughs> <laughs> you don't run with. with the small things that you might have found and people are excited watching. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, was there a question? Yeah, so like other um, connective tissue repairs, is that seven days to 21 days? Is that still a really simple time for this? And yeah, it is. And are these usually successful versus yes. smaller ones? Are very successful. Very mm -hmm. successful. I hate to say it, I'll knock on wood and I'm going to go close the door. I've never had a bicep rupture re ruptured. <laughs> There's some relay thing in there. Yeah, I've never had a bicep rupture re rupture. I've had other tendons, um, hopefully not from the fault of my own, but rupture. And, you know, I just saw a, a patient in the clinic last week, and she came in with a flexor tendon laceration um, in zone uh, two, you know, and um, she was like a week and a half out of surgery, and she came in, and I started going through all the protocol of telling her what was allowed, what was not allowed. And she's like, oh, the doctor never told me to do that. So what did she do from the time of surgery to the week and a half when I saw her? She obviously violated the protocol, right? Or she wouldn't have had that reaction when I brought it up to her. So the really big key is just education so patients don't do the wrong thing. So, but a long time, a big point, a long time before patients can get back to unrestricted use, and you have to limit their motion, not full extension, not full flexion, to decrease, to keep the tendon on a slack, and not too much pressure on it. So, that is biceps protocol. Yeah. With a proximal rupture, are they more susceptible to another bicep? I think if there was some bony prominence, and you didn't correct their posture, and there was some reason, but they could have done something physical too that was out of the ordinary. I have a lot of blood over there. They were running back and forth from the front of the room to the back. I have no idea what they're doing. We don't do that. So how about if we take 10 minutes and everyone complete their course evaluation, okay? Um, if you've already completed your course evaluation or you don't want to complete the course evaluation, I probably have people that could, you could check your grip, your grip strength from my case study if you're interested. So I'll go to the ADL room so that if you guys want to do your course evaluation you here, that I'm not here. And if you want to have your pinch strength checked, just come down to the ADL room. And then I'll come back in 10 minutes. Is that okay. So if you want to meet him, check your pinch. Or if anybody wants to rate pinch, Ron, if you want to. Yeah, it's going around somewhere. I mean,